Hi, I'm Danielle, and this is Chatter Out Loud, a podcast where I share thoughts and TV commentary, starting with one of my favorite shows, Big Brother. In this episode, I'm chatting about Celebrity Big Brother Season 3, and I have a few live feed updates and spoilers. So if you're not a fan of knowing who has either won an HOH, a POV, or has been nominated before that airs on CBS, the CBS episodes, um, then you should wait until my recap episode or come back and listen once the episode does air. So you have that option. Now, if you are interested, keep listening. There are a few things happening on the feed, so let's get into it. But first, (laughs) I wanted to take a few seconds out to welcome or welcome back um, all of you Uh, I've been getting quite a few new subscribers, and that surprises me. Um, It did make me smile. Uh, I was shocked uh, because I try to focus just on enjoying doing the recaps um, because I like the Big Brother game. Um, So to have people listening and subscribing, uh, that's an added bonus. So thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate your presence. Uh, I'm going to continue to do my best. um, And thank you so much. All right. So now let's get into it. What's happening on the live feeds? Um, and this won't be long because uh, I don't have much time. I'm kind of taking a, a half of my lunch to do this. All right. So this morning, um, or actually last night, I just tried to rewind some of the last the live feeds because I fell asleep. I was so tired. Um, but they confirmed that, uh, well, first, let me start by saying that both Carson and Lamar have been put on the block. So that's the spoiler, right? So we know that Todd Bridges, he's the HOH, and he did indeed uh, nominate Lamar and Carson. Carson and Lamar are on the block. All right. So I rewound the feeds when I woke up this morning. Okay. So um, they did confirm. Oh, hold on. (laughs) In the middle of doing this, um, the live feeds came back up, and it was loud because I kind of played in the background, and so I didn't want to. I didn't want you guys to have to hear that me trying to talk over that. All right, so uh, let me just step back. So I rewound the live feeds uh, this morning. They confirmed they meaning uh, Cynthia and Todrick. They they confirmed that they threw away the blue deck of cards uh, because those were that was the deck that Shayna was playing with. Um, and they didn't feel right because of the energy from those cards. They felt that the energy from the cards weren't right because Shayna was playing with them. <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure how to feel about that. Like, I believe in energy and stuff, but the whole thing with Shayna, that had nothing to do with Shayna and her crystals. That had everything to do with that being constructed by Todrick and Misha. So, there. are Cynthia and Todd, they're going to feel like fools when they get out of the house and and they're going to, or not Cynthia and Todd, I'm sorry, Cynthia and Carson are going to feel like fools um, when they get out of the house because they're going to realize how they were played and um, they're going to see what Todd and Misha did and then how Shayna wasn't really the bad person. Um, And I hope they feel bad. (laughs) you know, and then everyone's going to move on with their life. This is a game, but I don't know. It, I just thought it was weird that they talked about that they didn't want to play with the, they meaning Cynthia and Todrick didn't want to play with the blue deck of cards because that was the deck that Shayna was playing with. <laughs> and Cynthia was talking about she had good discernment. <laughs> and I'm thinking in my head, what is that, Cynthia, opposed to bad discernment? Like, what? <laughs> Like, I don't always get things right grammatically, you know what I mean? But good discernment is not a thing, Cynthia. Discernment is good judgment. You don't have to put good in front of it. Like, just, I, I want her to stop talking like that. She just annoys me. All right. Anyway, um, later on, later that, or, uh, later on uh, Todd Bridges is talking to Lamar, <laughs> and they were referring to Todrick. Todd Bridges says, He doesn't know anyone who talks as much as Todrick. (laughs) And that cracked me up. Uh, And I've been saying probably on every 
one of my episodes uh, covering Celebrity Big Brother that Todrick talks a lot. And um, I explained it in my other episodes, but most of what he he does is trying to defend and deflect. And sometimes people like that, when they talk so much, they're trying to convince you of what they know is BS, right? That's why they talk so much and explain so much. Um, it's like, what's understood don't need to be said. Like, he's just something else. All right. Uh, they both... They both, meaning Todd Todd Bridges and Lamar, in the same conversation, both admit that Celebrity Big Brother was harder than they had expected. And so that was an interesting insight. All right. Um, I was thinking about doing a separate little episode about this, but I don't know if I want to spend that much time. Um, because I did do a whole episode on the cookout itself. So if you look in my, uh, in my library of episodes, you'll see that there is one titled the cookout and you'll, you can listen to that and hear my thoughts. But the reason I'm bringing that up is because I'm seeing some things online where they are trying to associate Todrick and the cookout in terms of strategy and how it's viewed. And the only thing I wanted to say was that Todrick and the cookout is not the same. Okay. It's not the same. <laughs> uh, it's not the same. And, and that, that's why I didn't want to bring it up here because I want to say more, but I just want to just know it's not the same thing. It, it's just not. Todrick, um, the only association he has in terms of talking about the cookout is that he hosted them after the BB 23, uh, season ended. The, the cookout, I mean, their strategy, they had an excellent strategy, by the way, that was put together by Tiffany Mitchell. She was the mastermind, not Derek F. It was Tiffany. And I go on about that as well. (laughs) Anyway, um, the cookout, they executed a strategy with efficiency and excellence. Todrick is not doing that. He is playing the game. Yes, he did make that move. And that was a good gameplay when he shifted the target, the target from Shayna, or excuse me, from Misha to Shayna. That was good strategy. But all the other stuff that's wrapped around that in terms of how he's personally attacking people, he's always playing victim. The, the cookout didn't do that. They had internal beefs uh, with each other, you know, but in the end, they all understood the assignment. They all moved as a unit. Their strategy was excellent and efficient. They outplayed everybody in that house. And out of the 16 guests on BB23, six out of the 16 guests outsmarted everyone in there. And that wasn't by luck, wasn't by chance. It was a strategy that was excellent. They all had the same objective. They followed it. A few of them sacrificed their own games, but in the end, they moved as a unit and that was excellence, right? Now, they, there were players inside of the cookout that I felt that didn't contribute much, but that's not the point. The point is <laughs> that they all moved as a unit. It wasn't any mob mentality, there was no, it was nothing like we're seeing with, with Todrick. And I just wanted to make that clear because I don't like people trying to compare Todrick's gameplay, um, comparing it to the cookout. It's not the same. Okay. And that's my thought on that. All right. Then, uh, this is really what I wanted to talk about because I just can't believe it. All right. So Misha, she does this morning message to her husband or boyfriend or fiance, her significant other and the kids. Um, And during her message this morning, uh, Todrick came up. (laughs) So they're in the middle of the kitchen and they're standing up and they're talking to the camera, right? We see house guests do that all the time. But Todrick came and stood next to her, right? So Todrick is there. And of course, anytime he enters in a room or conversation, what do you think happens? It quickly shifts to him explaining, talking, and all this stuff. So when they started to pull up the bar stools to sit down and have a conversation with us live feeders, I said, "Oh, oh." <laughs> my thought, my first thought was, "Oh, oh no! What, what is happening?" 
Um, you guys, this went on for about 20 to 25 minutes, I think, maybe 30 minutes. I kind of gave up when I started listening in because I'm like, oh, my God. First of all, the audacity to think that you need to explain something to the live feeders when we see it. <laughs> so now he's going to try to explain what we saw and why what we what we're interpreting, what we see with our own eyes, why that's wrong. Right. So he's going to explain away what what's happening. So this went on for about 30 minutes. All right. So, I mean, it started off first. First, they were talking about, like I said, Misha was giving her hello message to her family. Then they were laughing about the unitars and saying how funny that was. Um, Then he went on to Lamar ripping up the cards. And so he had to explain that, right? (laughs) Of how that made him feel and how it put him in the funk for 15 hours and stuff like that. So he's, he's, I think he's saying that so he can say, here's why I've been acting like an ass, right? <laughs> That's what I think. He's, he's just setting us up. Let me explain to you why I've been acting like an ass, okay? All right. Then he went into um, the cuckoo room. He made a reference to the cuckoo room. I guess that's where he's sleeping. Um, and, and Lamar is in there and how he was forced to sleeping in there. I didn't want to rewind it and try to figure out what that meant. I just thought it was more... Um, more of Todrick. So I, I wasn't interested in that point. I do know I heard the cuckoo room and that he was forced to sleep in there. All right. Then they were talking about Cynthia. Her birthday's coming up. I think it's on Thursday and how Carson's going to bake a cake for her. Um, a velvet cake, red velvet cake or something like that. And then, like I said, y'all, then they started to pull up the chairs and to explain and give their perspective on the Shayna and NSYNC Chris thing. <laughs> and I thought, like I said, I thought this is a mistake. I, I don't think they should be doing this because it's just going to make them look worse. <laughs> but they proceeded. Okay. So Misha started to explain why she started or her her approach and her thought process coming into the house with starting the Athletes Alliance. Okay. We all know what happened. Sounded like a good plan, a good approach to me. I didn't see anything wrong with that. All right. Then Todrick goes into all of the alliances when everyone was approaching him. Do you want to be in an alliance? Because he knew people outside the house and stuff like that. Okay. Nothing wrong with that either. Although people did take issue with it because they they immediately said, look at Todrick. He's all over the place. And I thought that was unfair because people did approach Todrick. Like almost everybody in that house approached Todrick with the exception of, I think it was Todd Bridges and Lamar. I believe those were the only two that didn't approach Todrick to be in an alliance. So he didn't do it. He didn't approach, they approached him. So I thought that was a little unfair in the beginning, right? Now everything that people are saying about him and stuff, it's all, um, there's validity to it, right? And it's his own fault because of how he's acting, um, But anyway, he decided based on all of these alliances he was initially in that he was going to work with the one he was connect. He was most connected with. And that was the one with Misha because they were the same age. (laughs) They had the same interests. And I'm like, oh, you, you, you fight. You are MMA fighter, Todrick. Like (laughs) you, you have a family and children. Like what interests do you guys have? And then. At the same time, they're both saying, yeah, opposites attract. So like, what? I'm, I'm confused. I'm, what is your message? You either connected because you have the same interests and you're all the same, but then you're not the same because you're opposite and opposites attract. Like, what is the message? <laughs> what is the message? Right. And it just got worse from there. You guys, the whole explaining to us, the live feeders, like, what did you say? Um, I'm so upset that I can't get this time back. I could have like, you know, walked on the treadmill and worked out a little bit rather than listen to this. All right. So what Todrick talked and explained, defended, deflected as usual. Um, He explained about the layer of difficulty it is to be in the celebrity big brother season, you know, because they're in there for 30 days. They're celebrities. They have their careers afterwards and all of that Um, completely dismissing the layer of difficulty that it is to be in the regular season for 90 days, right? (laughs) For 90 days and the regular season, they don't get, they're not pampered like the celebrities are, right? They do their own laundry. They have to eat slop. 
They have they don't let those guys sleep in like they let the celebrities sleep in. They're not pampered, you know, and and they don't give them alcohol. Big Brother usually give the regular version of Big Brother alcohol when they want fireworks, right? They they've given alcohol to the celebrities almost every night. It's not the same experience, but he wants to explain to us loyal, like not I won't say loyal, but Big Brother fans who watch the live feeds because. When you're watching the live feeds, you really have some some time invested, right, into Big Brother. So I would say, live feeders, we know the game. We're not casuals. We just don't watch the aired version of uh, that's on CBS, right? We're, we're we're invested. We pay our little money every month to look at this mess. But he wants to explain to us the layer of difficulty it is to be on the Celebrity Big Brother season, and he's worried that the damage that Shayna could do on the outside by giving a Facebook Live to trash him while he's in the house. He knows that CBS will narrate this and edit the the episodes to show the truth. (laughs) I cannot. And by the way, I think he is getting, based on the live feeds and what we're seeing and what's the edited versions that are aired. I mean, this happens a lot in every season. Um, People usually get the, I mean, you would really have to be horrible. Like that Aaron person. Remember all those seasons ago? I don't even want to bring that up. Is that That's like, was traumatic. But she was so bad in her racism and everything that they couldn't even air that stuff. I mean, they had, they couldn't ignore it, I should say. Um, but Todrick has been given a, been, been given and I'm not talking about his his he's being racist that's not the comparison the comparison I'm trying to say is that certain thing like certain house guests they get a a good edit right so people online or excuse me people who only watch the episodes sometimes they can they're confused like why why are people hating him like why don't they like him and stuff like that when those of us that watch the live feeds like we see a lot of it although they're cutting the feeds a lot I don't even get into that but I guess what I want to say I don't want to ramble on this um too long I guess what I'm trying to say I'm attempting to say that Todrick is getting a decent edit right opposed to what we're seeing on the live feed. And I, and I brought in Aaron because I don't think like what he's doing is so outrageous. I mean, it's outrageous, but it's not as, as as outrageous as that Aaron girl because she was spewing like racial slurs and just making comments that were unacceptable and CBS could not ignore it. So they had to put some of that into the episodes that aired, right? So Aaron didn't get a good didn't get a good edit, but she shouldn't have because she wasn't <laughs> she was horrible, right? Todrick is horrible in in terms of the personal attacks and and the way he trash talks and all of that. Um, but we don't see that on the episodes that air, right? And so to me, I translate that as he's getting a good edit because they're leaving out all that foul stuff. All right. Going back to them pulling up these chairs and talking to the live feeders and explaining it away. Um, so Todrick is disheartened by what uh, he learned when Cynthia and Carson told him about Shayna. And he said that Cynthia, they, they, they're good narrators. And so he believed them. <laughs> Cynthia is a good narrator. So he believed her. Mm-hmm. Right. All right. All right, he doesn't want to be perceived as a bad person and that Shayna and Instinct Chris attacked him personally. The feeds cut in and out. I was exhausted. I gave it about 20 minutes. I couldn't take any more. My conclusion is that Todrick is doing what he does best. He's talking. He's explaining, defending, deflecting. He's playing the victim. He has no accountability for what he did. Um, because he doesn't think he's done anything wrong until he gets outside of the house and he'll see how people view him and then he'll try to explain that away. But by then we won't really care because we all move on with our lives, watch other shows, and then wait for the real version of Big Brother in the summer. Uh, He thinks he's right in everything he does. 
And then he's trying to offer us excuses of why he had to be so, you know, hard and 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 firm with with both Shayna and in St. Chris. Um, and it's funny because if you let him tell it, uh, he has put so much thought into all of this, right? He's like, for the past 24 hours, I've thought about this. And I'm thinking, you haven't... The only thing he has thought about is how this could potentially hurt him on the outside. And so this is how he's trying to clean it up. And I don't think he put much thought into the way he's talked to and bashed Shayna. I don't think he put much thought into the way he uh, talked to uh, talked about and to um, NSYNC Chris about you know his dad and all this pettiness or him being a dad. And his pettiness and stuff, I think that's innate in who he is. Like, this is who he is. So he does, he just reacts and this is how he is. So the fact that now over the past 24 hours, he's given thought and doing this stuff and still is defending and explaining and giving excuses. It's just, it's very telling. Um, anyway, that's all I had. Um, like I said, I couldn't take any more, um, if something new comes <laughs> within the next or before I do my recap, because remember, uh, an episode is airing tonight and they'll show the HOH competition, who wins, and they'll show who who is up for nomination. I think we'll get all of that in tonight's episode. But I wanted to come and share um, some of the things I'm seeing on the live feeds. So I don't want to summarize. You just rewind and listen. So I'll continue to watch the live feeds um, as I get a chance. Like I said, I usually have it on as background <laughs> until I have to take a call or something. And then I just uh, turn the volume down. Yep. And that's all I have. So I look forward to the next ep- next episode tonight. I hope you do too. I'm so excited to see um, the HOH competition and then the Hojito and Lime and how that came about. And we'll all get to see Lamar and Todrick in their costumes, in their unitards, and see them tethered together and walking around the house. I am so looking forward to the diary room sessions of watching <laughs> Lamar's reaction to this. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. All right. All right. So that's all I have. Uh, quick and easy. So be sure to come back and give me a listen, like, follow, share, subscribe. You can leave me a comment. Leave me a message. Um, if you're listening to the podcast, there's a link to leave a message um, right right there when you're looking at the episode. So check that out. Um, you can find me by looking for Chatter Out Loud. I have this podcast. I tweet. I'm on YouTube. So look for Chatter Out Loud and you'll find me. Yep. So my name is Danielle and you're listening to my podcast, Chatter Out Loud. Thank you so much for joining me. And as always, I appreciate your support. And that's all I have. Thanks again for listening. And I'll talk to you next time.